Is Nalfi Glacia evidence of ancient technology, a worldwide megalithic culture, interdimensional portal, or stick around for number four where I tell you one of the most coolest stories of treasure hunters seeking for gold. Nalpa Glacia may seem remote, but it's really only about 30 or 40 minutes from Ayante Tambo and well worth it. Take a taxi cab ride right to the base or for a couple of soles, go over to Puente Pachar and then hike for 45 minutes through a gorgeous hillside. Either way you do it, it's well worth the trip. So we're at the base of Nalpa Glacia. We're going to walk over some to these stairs that we're going to go up, up to somewhere up there. And then to give you a perspective of where we're at, how far above the road we are. Even though there was 275 stairs to climb and about a 50 degree angle, it really wasn't that long before we were at the top. And when you first get there, it looks like, okay, there's a rock and a cave, ho-hum. But wow, does that get interesting. When you first step in, you'll see a little cave in the very back. Didn't really seem of much interest to me. Really, the two most important features are the big, beautiful, well-defined, well-cut, uh, interdimensional portal, at least that's what they'll tell you it is. And then right in the middle of the mouth of the cave, which is about 45 feet wide maybe, is this altar. Uh, you can tell immediately that something cataclysmic has happened to it, been damaged in some way. And then they explain that this wall over here is from the Tiwanaku people. But by far, those two features right there were just absolutely fascinating. And that's what we're going to look at in detail because I think it gives us a glimpse is into whether they had ancient technology. So first on our list, and something I've been doing throughout the entire trip, was asking, is there evidence of ancient technology in Peru, perhaps of a worldwide megalithic culture? We've been shown many evidences of where they felt that the Inca were softening stone or a pre-Inca culture, but this was the first time I saw multiple evidences of the ability to cut rock. And this wasn't just my opinion. I asked one of the top guides at the local Yante Tambo ruins, and this is what he said. So, cree que tuvieron la habilidad para cortar piedra? Por supuesto. Por supuesto, mira, que esos cortes perfectos son. There were also a lot of these cuts on the rock that had broken off and fallen down probably about five feet below the main rock. Now, whether this is normal for this type of rock or he's correct that these are cut marks, I can't tell you. But that's certainly what it looked like to me, including these ones that we saw on the ceiling. It's the upper edges of where the cave comes to a peak. And I asked him, are these cut marks? And he said it could be. Nobody really knows. The only other cut marks we'd seen so far was on a stone near Cusco, just up from the Saxe Woman ruins, and it had these really polished, sharp edges to it. And when I showed my husband, it elicited quite a response. Wife was pointing out that this right here, oh, it's smooth as glass, literally. Smooth as glass right here, like it was polished. Again, not something you'd do just because you're bored. Another evidence of ancient technology is perhaps this cut on the back side of the beautiful portal area. I asked him, I said, do you think somebody that has to chip all this by hand and has to grow all their own food, make all their own clothing, etc., do life from scratch, do you think somebody like that would cut this for seemingly no reason? And he said, no, they had to have technology or they wouldn't have wasted their time on this. So it was interesting to get the perspective of somebody that lives there and, and does you know, this kind of work for a living. Another thing I was curious about when I went to Peru was, is there evidence of a worldwide megalithic culture pre-Inca and that maybe the Inca found this stuff and built on it? And sure enough, again, this guy is one of the top, if not the top, guide at the Yante Tambo ruins. And his professional opinion was, and he brought this up without me asking, he felt there was a worldwide megalithic culture three or 4,000 or more years ago and that things like this are an example of it. He said there's similarities in some of the megalithic cultures around the world and specifically pointed to this stone in the Yante Tambo ruins and said that there's a stone in Egypt that looks exactly like it. So take it for what it is. That's his opinion, and I agree with him. Number three, is this an interdimensional portal? Normally, they would just assume that this is where they put one of their idols, but many people, if they put their hands on the sides and then their head in the center, they feel energy. Some Peruvians even believe that the Inca were traveling to other places through this. My guide in particular felt the angels have come through it. Could it possibly be aliens too? 
Although I don't personally believe in aliens, I do believe in the supernatural, and I will tell you in upcoming videos about some of the UFO quote-unquote sightings in Ollante Tambo and other places. Some people say they can feel the energy just standing there in the cave. Personally, coming from a biblical worldview, I believe there's a dark force in this world, and so I don't open myself up to energies and concepts like that, so I didn't feel energy in the portal or standing there. But I was in awe of the construction of these, and to hear his conviction after living and working there all these years, a, a guide at the local ruins, for him to believe that there was a megalithic culture worldwide was just really interesting to hear. Out of curiosity, I did measure it, and it's 19 inches deep at the top, 21 inches deep at the bottom, and then 35 inches wide. When I asked him how these were made, he said, you know, obviously normally you're told that they're done with sand and leather and, you know, it's ground out. But he thinks the ancient technology is a better explanation for this. And although I do agree with him because of the stunning way this was designed, if you look really close, you could make the case that this has pockmarks of some sort as if it were hit with another rock. One of the theories, though, is that they were using a certain type of leaf to make a mixture to soften the stone. So perhaps that leaves different textures depending on, you know, how they mixed it up. All I know is that here and this stone and a couple other places in the Cori Concha in Cusco, you could make the case that it looked like pockmarks. But then again, look at this. Instead of going straight across and making this easy on yourself, to go all the way through the back of that stone with that kind of angle and not be able to get a knife or a piece of paper between it, it just screams ancient technology. Number four, treasure hunters looking for gold. This was one of the most interesting things that came up in the trip. Because of the complexity and tight fittingness of the stones and the obvious fact that they were softening them, it's led to the idea that there's something that they were hiding, perhaps putting gold in the middle of these things. And so treasure hunters supposedly have gone looking for them in various places. And this might be one example of it. There are very intelligent, very well-studied guides that will tell you that right where you put your head, that little tunnel above it is where water or blood came out. But my guide explained that treasure hunters believed that there was gold of some sort inside this and that they blew this up with dynamite. He said that hole right there in the center is where one of the sticks of dynamite was. And then he drew my attention over here. All right, on the right-hand side where this is um, all broken off, he pointed out that this is another spot where they probably put the dynamite. I don't know anything about dynamite, but that sure looked like, you know, the most logical explanation for what we're seeing here. The only other thing of interest that we saw was this little hut type thing that he said is where the monks stayed. And also lower down below that was a cave that had rocks that went up to the ceiling. You'll notice that this is not the sophisticated style that we saw in the video I showed you on the Temple of the Moon at Machu Picchu where it looked again like the rock was maybe softened so that it would fit into place perfectly. Places like the Temple of the Moon, the beautiful cuts on this portal, the giant gorgeous stones at Saxe Woman, all of these things seem to be in stark contrast to the little type of rocks that you see in many of the other places in Peru. So I think that my conclusion is you could say this is examples of ancient technology, probably a worldwide megalithic culture that predated the Inca. I don't think it was an interdimensional portal, but again, I do think that the variation of, you know, styles that you see throughout Peru, this conglomeration of, you know, two different cultures is evidence that we're seeing a megalithic culture that had technology that we probably lost. Definitely worth you investigating for yourself. So if you get to Peru, take the time to go to Naupe Iglesia and well worth your effort.